until I was 10. Well, which was different than a lot of uh, my peers. They were barreling their way through the Babysitter's Club and Are You There God? It's Me Margaret. And I, for whatever reason, stubbornly refused to like or enjoy reading. So my gateway drug, so to speak, was comic books. Specifically, it was ElfQuest, which upon reflection is possibly not appropriate content for a 10-year-old to be reading. There are a lot of elf orgies in ElfQuest. They're very comfortable with their sexuality, those uh, wolf riders. But I had access to all of this because I have much older siblings, and they were all out of the house, but their stuff wasn't. So I was able to just wander into their old rooms and pick up a book and leaf through it. And pretty soon I was going from just blatantly ogling pictures of elf orgies to actually reading the content of these books and actually becoming engaged in them. And then pretty soon it was zero to a hundred and I was reading things like the Dragonlance Chronicles and David Eddings' The Belgariad. I was reading pretty much exclusively fantasy. I had no patience for anything that was not fantasy. And I think mostly because I loved it because it was so far removed from the life that I was living, because I didn't like the life that I was living. I was, you know, your sort of John Hughes 80s movie sort of nerd. I had the giant 80s glasses. I was not athletic. Uh, I was not popular. I was mercilessly picked on by those who were popular. And what I loved about a fantasy character is that it wasn't just that the pretty girl, uh, or the girl became pretty and then got a date for prom and then the whole senior class liked her. It was that the character, um, turned into the most uh, amazingly powerful person on the entire planet and saved the whole world, and then the entire world loves them. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I think uh, it was natural that I then, uh, one of my favorite series ended up being uh, by R.A. Salvador, and uh, it was part of the Forgotten Realms series, and uh, one of the lead characters in it was Drizzt Duerden, I know what you're all thinking. I'm pronouncing his name wrong. That's fair. <laughs> However, I think that if you're going to have a first name that ends with just two Z's and a T, that I should have free reign to pronounce that any way that I want to. And there was no internet when I was reading these books, so it wasn't like I could Google drow elf pronunciation guide linguistic origins, which... Now that I actually can Google that, I choose not to. <laughs> because if someone should look at my Google browsing history, I would rather them discover that I had Googled every nerd's big boob boat butt ride. That is the name of an actual pornography. <laughs> rather than see that I Googled how to speak the drow language. So Drizzt Duerton. He was similar to, uh, obviously I, I played Dungeons and Dragons, and he was similar to a lot of the characters that I like to play. I couldn't play a character that was just likable. I had to play a character with a charisma so high that everyone who came within a ten foot radius just swooned over. And so Drizzt, like that, he had such amazing combat skills, he wielded a scimitar in each hand. And uh, there are whole scenes in this series where, like, every single character has to stop what they're doing and just marvel in awe at how awesome he is at hand-to-hand -hand combat. So uh, when an opportunity came for uh, me to go to a signing of Ari Salvador, I was absolutely giddy at the opportunity. And I think that... It, it's kind of this odd feeling that you get when you go to see someone that you uh, idolize or, you know, that's, that's someone who's famous to you. I feel like there's this small part of you that thinks, like, maybe in that three minutes that I will be in front of them, that we will somehow make a connection, and then they will somehow invite me out for drinks afterwards, and then we will end up staying out all night long, and we will talk, and we will have the best time ever, and then I will become super cool by association because we will be best friends, and everyone will love me. <laughs> so, I was waiting in line, I got to 
to go with my cousin, which was very exciting, and I feel like we I actually made a connection with Ari Salvador. He ended up signing my D and D character, which was kind of amazing. I was like, okay, thank you. This is great. And I walked away from it just with this amazing, positive feeling. He did not invite me out for drinks later, but an opportunity uh, came for him to rectify that. Uh, he came back for another signing, uh, you know, only maybe a year and a half later. So this was at the mall. I say the mall because this is Portland, Maine, and we only have the anything. Um, so, so I went by myself this time, which for me felt, it just felt very brave and bold. Like, I am a confident grown-up now. And he was doing a talk beforehand, and I got to sit in and, and listen to him, and, and it was a really powerful and engaging talk. He talked about how his brother had died and how much that affected his writing and the decisions that he had made and the stories that he had told because of that. And I was in line, uh, and, and I had brought an entire backpack full of books in the hopes that he would sign as many of them as humanly possible. Books that had, like, covers falling off of them because they were so well-loved and well-read. And I, and I was saying to him, you know, oh my god, I'm, I, I'm so sorry for your loss. I have, I have three older brothers, and I, I don't know what I would do without them. I, I can't even imagine what it would be like. Yeah, you're right. You can't imagine that. And I was like, this is not going as well as the last time went. This is, okay, I can, I can recover. I can recover. Uh, you know, I have these books. He's willing to sign them. And this coincided, of course, with him uh, having a new book that he had just written. And it wasn't Drizzt, but it was in the world of Drizzt. But I kind of was less interested in it because of that. Uh, and he starts selling me on it. Like, he has a pile of them, and he's just like, you, you really need to read this one. And I was like, oh, okay. Because he's, you know, sort of wondering, like, you brought a backpack full of books. Why don't you want my new one? And I'm not going to say no to Ari Salvador. If he asks me to buy a book, I will say yes, I will buy that book. And he offered to sign it, which was wonderful. And so I'm kind of trying to just stay in his presence for just a few minutes more and have a little bit of a conversation. And I just sort of mindlessly start taking all of my books and putting them back into my backpack and just not worrying about it. And a security guard grabs my arm and says, yeah, you're going to need to pay for that book there. And I realize that I've just mindlessly and accidentally gone to put the book that he just, that was new, that he just signed back into my backpack with everything else. And I look up at him and never has anyone looked at me with such shame as R.A. Salvador looked at me. And I'm just mortified and I'm babbling over myself, like, no, 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 I would never steal a, oh my god, no, I would never steal a book, I wasn't gonna steal this book, and he gives me this condescending smirk, yeah, no, of course you wouldn't, and I'm just shell-shocked, and I go and I buy the book that I didn't even want to read in the first place, and I'm walking away, and I'm thinking, Ari right, Salvador is a dick. <laughs> he did not end up inviting me out for drinks and we did not become best friends. He thought I was a thief and not even a cool fantasy character thief where I have this endearing amorality and the cunning and dexterity to pull off an Ocean's Eleven level heist single-handedly. Had I been that person, I would have grabbed the book in one hand, grabbed my crossbow in the other one with grappling hook, shot it into the <laughs> ceiling, broken the stained glass, gone up to the rooftops, leapt from rooftop to rooftop, eventually taken the book, which is now glowing because it's the book of power, managed to get back <laughs> safely into the catacombs of Portland, Maine, where now obviously I've saved the world and everyone loves me. That is not what happened. Instead, I just walked away and thought, maybe I don't really want everyone to like me. I definitely don't want R.A. Salvador to like me. And to be fair, 
I actually think that I did him a favor by not becoming his best friend. Because had I been his best friend, it would have been my best friend obligation to eventually, lovingly, informed him, you're kind of a shitty writer. <laughs> <laughs>